Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I'm going to walk you through four tests that will help you understand if you are correctly typed or not. So, mistypes are a big issue in the Myers-Briggs type indicator. We all see ourselves differently. There are a myriad of issues that keep us from seeing ourselves clearly and from understanding and getting the correct personality type. Even if we take personality tests and even if we have the help of friends and family, we might still not be able to type ourselves accurately. Or we might be even more likely to type ourselves inaccurately because there's a lot of content out there that is vague or misleading or false. So using these four tests, you are going to have a step-by-step -step of a bias that you need to uh, confront in yourself and recognize in yourself a bias that will help you understand, wait a second, am I seeing this clearly or am I mistyped? So the first common issue I see is the four effect. The four effect allows us to read ourselves in generic or general personality traits that are true to most people. Most personality descriptions out there contain vague and generic personality descriptions such as you want to be liked by others or you are good at uh, being loyal towards your friends or things like that but not when you've been wrong, you know, <laughs> then you're not very loyal. Uh, and those things are so generically written, anybody will relate to them, and that's an issue. There is the four effect, and there's also the Rorschach effect. The Rorschach effect is our ability to see different things in a statement that, yeah, we, we take one generic or common statement about a personality type and we identify it differently. Immediately we contextualize. You need privacy. What does privacy mean? How do I reflect that? How do I show that? Often we identify or read a statement completely different from other people. If you take a basic personality test question, we can often understand that question very differently from other people. So often... An important aspect, something you have to do constantly, is explain your definitions, explain your context, explain how you see this personality trait and see if other people see it the same way. How do you understand this question? How do you understand this description? What does this word mean to you? What does this value mean to you? And what you have to find is some kind of common ground. The accuracy of your own typing immediately connects with the ability for other people to type themselves accurately and for them to type you accurately. You have to start discussing this matter with other people in an open-minded sense and you have to be ready to integrate and work together with other people. And you want to use all kinds of methods to do so. You want to use blind tests, you want each of you to practice typing, you want each of you to write down your answers and explanations, you want to use basic tests and basic descriptions and methods that you can trial out and test on each other and on other people. How does this one work? How does this fit? How does that not fit? Uh, does that trait work? Does that not work? What are the issues with this description? How could this be more accurate? You have to start working together with other people to understand yourself and to understand them better. You have to be open to the fact that you might be wrong or you might be inaccurate. Now, I mentioned there are different contexts that can get in the way of typing yourself accurately. Now, I've identified four key contexts. There are basically four versions of the self. First, there is the natural self, and that is you. That is your personality type. That is who you are at your best in flow under ideal circumstances. Who you can be or who you are when you are in your best state. What you naturally radiate towards other people. What you find easy and enjoyable and meaningful to do. And how you express yourself and what you like to express and what you like to do. And what your values are and what you feel. This is me. But this definition of the self gets in the way of other definitions of the self. For example, the ideal self, you know, or the habitual self the superego or the child versions of yourself. And worst of all, the anxious self. The anxious self is the biggest issue to accurate self-typing. Your anxieties and your struggles and your stressors in life can keep you from seeing yourself accurately. And what I see is, whenever a person talks about their personality type from a context of, yeah, I struggle so much with dealing with people and I find it so hard to go out and I find it hard to 
uh, be around other people and I get easily anxious and uh, yeah, I'm stressed at work and there's I'm not good enough and uh, I keep running into these issues and uh, I um, everybody misunderstands me you know when you come from that approach into personality psychology you're not gonna see yourself accurately you're not gonna see other people accurately that amount of negativity and anxiety can almost cause you to reverse your own personality type identifying with your worst sides of yourself starting to talk about yourself from your core weaknesses or anxieties rather than who you are at your best so these kind of types they talk about themselves from the perspective of what they w always worked to improve in themselves they they constantly tried to champion their own stress and anxiety and they tried to better themselves and they tried to fix themselves and they tried to fit in and they tried to get along with other people and they pushed themselves to do better and they pushed themselves very hard and they are often very stressed and very tense you know and that tenseness also comes from holding up a persona a heavy persona you know constantly forcing yourself to be a certain way even though it's difficult constantly trying to be a certain person even though it's not really you and it can be very hard to overcome this version of the self. But perhaps harder still is to overcome the habitual self. You know, a lot of people get stuck on the habitual self, the child version of yourself. You know, your escapes in life, what you run to when everything's get difficult. You know, uh, for me, it could be that whenever... I wasn't ready to confront my own emotions or to open up to other people. I would pretend I didn't have any emotions. Or, uh, for me, it could also be that, you know, whenever I uh, ran into a situation where relationships issues and struggles got the better of me, it would be that, uh, yeah, I would try to escape into easy work and easy tasks and uh, projects that would take up all my time. So I didn't have time for other people, you know. And the habitual self is basically whatever we run to whenever things become difficult. And that's just, you know, I'm procrastinating. I uh, tend to fall into watching videos for a long time. It's, uh, I tend to, uh, you know, uh, get stuck playing games all day. It's that version of yourself that you're constantly fighting against. You know, that part of yourself that keeps you from chasing out for your ideals or your passions or your dreams. Often uh, we pursue these in spite of our higher goals and higher values and often it comes from you know running away from something so it's kind of like the lion king syndrome you know where you escape because you're not ready to confront or deal with something in life that has become very difficult for you so people who come with this issue often often what happens is they tend to identify with uh, being introverted if they are introverted and but being judging if they are judging types but without the intuition without the feelings that they normally have or with the, that they have at their best without the values that they care about without the interest that they feel the most joy about they often talk in a more apathetic sense about what they do it's like yeah um it's an easy source of fun it's, it takes no energy it's zero uh, challenge zero reward Often they get caught in typing or identifying with themselves purely from an aspect of their obstacles in life. You know, their personality type is suddenly what they are not ready to confront or deal with or what, they're, what they keep getting stuck on, what they keep thinking they have to do even though they don't have to really do it. So the habitual self is one aspect of mistyping and the anxious self is another aspect of it. Third, the dream self, that's that's a big one, the dream self, the ideal self. A lot of people get stuck on their ideal self. A lot of people mirror their own self-typing. So an ENFP starts to think they're an INFJ and INTP starts to think I'm an ENTJ or an uh, ENFJ starts to think I'm an INFP actually, you know? And what the problem is here is these types are often very focused on their primary needs in life, you know. They completely disregard their own personality and their own behavior. And instead, they start talking about what it is to their need in life. You know, yeah, I... Um, 
as an ENFJ, it can be misplacing or neglecting or ignoring your own need for relationships and connection because you also need or greatly seek for peace in personal relationships, peace and harmony with other people. It can be, you know, neglecting your need uh, to give to other people uh, but because you need authenticity or honesty from other people. Often these types, they talk about what they need from the world and from other people. They say, yeah, I've learned that I really need to sit down and focus and I've learned that I really need to uh, have peace and harmony around me to feel good and I've learned that it's very important for me to have uh, privacy and space from other people and I've learned that it's very important for me not to have and then they start talking about their demons what they don't want to have in their life you know I don't want to have a lot of attention to myself I don't like when people watch me I don't like when people do this and that so the dream self mistype happens when we focus primarily on our needs and interests and uh, also our opposite needs and interests so basically what we don't want and what we don't need or what uh, we what really annoys us in other people or in the world things that get in our way things that uh, are always getting around our necks you know so the dream self mistype is basically a becoming of whatever it is you need it's uh, tricking yourself that you are exactly what you need it's uh, tricking yourself that you are exactly who you dream or idealize or what you idealize in the world like if you look up to a certain thing or a certain person it is wanting to be that kind of a person it's um, looking at somebody and realizing this is um, something great and this is something I love and this is something I greatly appreciate and just because you admire it so much and just because uh, you look up to it so much there is a desire to take on those personality traits and there is also of course a genuine work to do these things we are constantly striving to embody our dream self everybody uh, in a healthy state of mind should be trying to embody and learn from the traits that we see in our ideal self or in our dream self it's like wanting to be the person that you um, have always looked up to it's that part of yourself that is never complete because and this is why it's not your personality type because it's never complete it's your savior it's what you look up to it's what you search for it's uh, constant self-improvement but you're never there you never really embody these things you never really have these things fully you always want more of it you always wish you had more of it you always wish you would take more time to it than that you would do it better and that you would improve at it so the dream self is a very uh e easy mistype in that sense uh, because um uh, you want to be that person and because you want to be that person you want to see yourself as that person so the final version of the self and the self that i feel best corresponds to our personality that is our natural self and that is uh, who you are at your best that is your key strengths and passions and your key values and what you identify the most strongly with what you feel is the most you now the thing about this is this is also your key issues and struggles. It's also the things that you dislike about yourself. It's also the things that you're, uh, the problems that you have. It's also the struggles that you have. The issue with the natural self is it's just you. It's the, your bad sides, it's your good sides. It's uh, like all those things that you have and all those things that you do all the time, every day. It's things that you see and that you uh, things you say it's things that you uh, do it's constantly radiated outward so almost everybody can see this in ourselves because we're constantly doing it to other people we're constantly uh, being kind we're constantly helping other people we're constantly doing this and we naturally do it we can't help ourselves but do it so it just comes out and so everybody else can see it but not us and that's the issue here uh, we don't see what we are doing, we don't see our conscious behavior that we are always doing because we're not looking at that. We're looking at, okay, what is it I need, what is I dream of, what is it I want, uh, uh, what, I, what, uh, what are my escapes, what are my reliefs, what are the common obstacles I keep getting stuck in. It's 
um, what is it I wish I was, it is, uh, what is it I really, really wish I was better at, and you know, the problem with the, the anxious self is, uh, and I talked about this, the anxious self is one of the other big issues of mesotyping, is it constantly berates us, constantly criticizes us, constantly looks down on us. So the anxious self can cause us to flip our self-view and it can start making us look at our own personality type and other people with the same personality type in a constantly negative light. We only see the negatives of what they do, we only see the blind spots, we only see the issues. And there is a natural thing about this in that we always tend to want to mirror other people, but we also tend to want to at the same time reject other people. And that's the crazy dynamic of push and pull that we always have with other people and with ourselves. We are constantly pulled to other people and we always look at and feel inspired by their behavior, but we also want to kind of reject them and kind of also push away from certain aspects of them. And that's why often self-typing is so difficult. We might identify or have, or have found certain aspects of ourselves, but not others. We might be very aware of one side of ourselves, but there might be other sides of ourselves that we don't see or refuse to acknowledge. So there might be things that you like about yourself and in your personality type that are natural and true to your flow type. And then there might be as other aspects of yourself that you are not ready to acknowledge or see in yourself. So the four tests that I want to bring before you that will help you find accurate self-typing is first, take whatever trait you're studying right now, if it is the archetype of the giver, if it is the archetype of the individualist, if it is the archetype of the philosopher, and think about whether this is an anxiety or stress in your life. Is it something you wish you were? Is it something you've been working towards? Is it something that you idealize? Or is it just you? Go through that list constantly. Is it something I idealize? Is it something I wish I was? Is it something that, uh, con uh, that I feel stressed or worried about? Do I want to give a positive impression to other people? Do I do it because I enjoy it or do I do it because I want other people to like me or why do I do what I do? Always ask yourself, why do I do it? what I do? Look at and find your natural motivation, your natural interests and your natural values and overcome that anxious version of yourself, you know, champion that side of yourself, you know, I'm good enough, I'm good enough the way I am. <laughs> Uh, I'm tired of being mean to myself. I'm tired of uh, criticizing myself so much. I am going to be more gentle with myself and more accepting and understanding, not just of myself, but other people with the same personality type as me. And work to the habitual self by recognizing, do I do it because I care or do I do it because it's easy? Recognize when you're escaping into easy sources of fun or frivolous activities that you don't genuinely value. Recognize when what you're doing is uh, easy but not true, not authentic, not real. With all that in mind, recognize with the ideal self, is this something I'm striving towards? Is it something I dream of? Is it something I idealize? Or... Is it something that just naturally f reflects me, the good sides and the bad? With that list and with these tests, thank you for watching this video and let me know on patreon.com slash ericdor if you need any help typing yourself or understanding yourself better. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.